Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about distortion and specifically how we can get a lot more color and flavors out of our distortion and how to make cool bass sounds with just a very, with like no synth knowledge at all. So the first thing I'm gonna do, or actually the first thing I already did, was uh, load silent with just a plain boring saw wave. No, saw waves are not boring, they're cool. Um, but this is just one saw wave. Right? Um, then what I did is, and in fact I'll, I'll do this again, but I loaded a distortion on that channel and I'm gonna go for sound choice decapitator, which is nice. I'll put the drive pretty high. Uh, so right now it sounds like this is probably gonna be loud. All right, so this is without, with. Um, now, how we can affect that is, um, the first thing we need to know is that distortions, they, they're very difficult effects to actually uh, make digitally because they are, they're constantly changing and they, they react on the audio that is incoming. It's not a static thing, like with an equalizer, if you cut away a certain set of frequencies, it will always cut away those frequencies, no matter what. But distortions are sort of more alive. They, they react on, on what's happening on the input channel. And um, specifically about louder, like louder signals get a different distortion color. So um, what we're going to do is um, set up an equalizer and I can use this Pro Q right here. And in that equalizer, I can make a bump. Let's say, let's set this to 10 dB at 60 Hertz, although the Hertz doesn't matter for now. And now let's try to, to sweep this band around and see how it changes that color of the distortion. Actually, I already automated that. I forgot that. Let's um, let's remove that. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Now, um, I understand you don't always want to boost 10 dB at um, uh, any frequency. So um, a common thing that I do is I actually set up two equalizers, one before the distortion and one after. And the one after the distortion will take away what the one uh, what the equalizer before the distortion boosts. So basically, left is before, right is after. Uh, what I can do is I can um, copy this equalizer, paste it in the other one, and then set it to negative 10 dB. This means that um, the sound isn't changed at all. So if I bypass my distortion. So this was the this is the sound with the equalizers, and this is without. So it's exactly the same because these two cancel each other out. So only the distortion in this case is listening to that bump because it's in between those two equalizers. All right. Now um, because I want to move these um, at the same time. Um, I want to set up one control to do that. In Ableton, that's very easy with the uh, effect racks. In Logic, uh, we can use these smart controls. So if I hit B, I can open my smart controls. And I'll start with a clean, uh, sort of clean setting. To do that, you go here and then you say delete all patch mappings. Then I'll make sure this first knob here is selected. And I'll click learn. And then I'm gonna click on the frequency control for my first equalizer. Now it has uh, mapped that knob to that frequency knob right there. And now I'm gonna add a mapping right there. And I'm gonna hit learn again. And then I'm gonna choose this second frequency knob. So now it has mapped those two to that same knob. So just using this one, I can move both equalizers at the same time. Now I only want to work in the lower ranges here, so I'm gonna um, limit this to, let's say, scale this from 10 to 500 hertz on both of them. 
so that the knob, if it's all the way up, it's just 500 hertz on the, um, on the equalizer. So now we can actually experiment with these different distortion flavors. I can close these equalizers and just move this knob around. So that way you can make really cool, uh, gritty bass sounds. One other thing I want to show with this um, is if I mute my equalizers for a second, an effect that actually automatically does this already is a phaser, because phasers, they create notches and peaks in the frequency spectrum. Basically, a phaser is doing the same thing, but then inverted. We will do something like this, and then it has multiple bands, and it will sweep that around. So that is actually exactly what we want. Um, here we're in Phase Mistress, also by Sound Toys. And, um, here we can see the base frequency and then we're modulating that. And you can see the speed of modulation. I can set that with the rate. Um, I'm not gonna explain everything about this plugin, um, but let's just experiment with this, which is basically the same thing, but then now it's automatic. Let's experiment with that and see like what kind of sounds we can get. bottom we have the number of stages which means how many peaks it's gonna have so the stages are like peaks like that you you really have to you can think of this as an as an equalizer where it's where it will create these notches and it will move those notches around just like that um, and here we can say like okay how many of those notches we want we have some other options we have the resonance which is very important that's just the um, same as filter resonance as well. It's gonna boost at the cutoff frequency, so that's gonna that's gonna really make that bump. Without resonance, it doesn't have a lot of effect. Just a little bit, but with resonance, you can get some crazy stuff. And if we mute this again, remember our in input sound. It was that plain old saw wave, but with this. And now we can modulate it in all sorts of ways. So I can modulate it with a square wave. So I will jump to different sort of values. Or with some uh, stepped wave, which is nice. Then you get multiple different sounds. with just a plain old sine wave. Now one last thing, um, because I, I try to make these videos short, but that's a little bit difficult for me. One last thing I want to um, show you is this punish button right here on the decapitator. Um, that sort of proves the whole point what we're, of what we were talking about. Um, when I said that distortion behaves like more aggressively on, on louder frequencies or it will behave differently on louder frequencies, what this punish button does, it's nothing special. It only adds gain to the input. And to test that, what we can do, and this is another thing I, um, I do quite often, is I'll take a plugin that's um, uh, modeled after some analog. Yeah, like you, you want some sort of analog flavored um, plugin in most cases to do this. And what I will do is I'll um, put a gain before that plugin and I'll boost like 20 dB, something crazy. And then after that plugin, so this is the same ID, I take down that 20 dB again. So in this case as well, only, only that um, plugin in between these two will get that very loud, that very, very aggressive signal. 
um, which in this case is, is the distortion. So you're, you're not uh, destroying your own ears, you're just really torturing this plugin in between there. And this is actually what that punish button does as well. It's just adding gain to the input and I'm taking that away from the output. Um, so with this, um, we should get a similar effect. So hopefully you can you can hear the sound change there. I'll set this a little bit higher just for now. Something like that. And then I'll fade it up again and I'll um, leave the modulation off for now. Um, right there. So we're gonna have a static sound and then I'll just I'll just start raising the um, input gain. Hopefully you hear that um, besides getting louder, it also really changed the tone of the distortion. So these are all super fun techniques to mess around with. Um, they're super cool for sound design, but they can be very useful for mixing as well. Um, I hope you get something out of that and I will see you in the next video. The Pyramind Mentorship Network connects you to experienced professionals for truly customized private training in music production, sound design, music business, and more. Use our scheduling tool to select the type of training you want, pick your mentor, find a day and time that works best for you, then book your session. Your appointment will be confirmed instantly. Study only what you want, progress at your own pace, pay as you go, and do it all from the comfort of your home or studio. Our global network of industry experts are here to help you. Visit pyramind.com mentorship to get started.